All right. Thank you so much for that incredibly kind introduction, guys. Um, it's very flattering, and I certainly will do my best to try to stand up to it. Um, as uh, was mentioned, my name is Chris Patterson, and I'm a product manager for GitHub Actions. I've been working on GitHub Actions ever since uh, we we really started um, almost two years ago now, actually, been working on GitHub Actions and, and building it out. And uh, before we get started with uh, today's topic, which is really talking about how we can improve continuous delivery with GitHub Actions and really focusing on some of those really neat features that uh, you guys saw in the keynote from that, I wanted to talk a little bit about where GitHub Actions has grown uh, since we launched it actually at Universe one year ago today, since it went, or not today, at least about, about one year ago, uh, since it went GA. So GitHub Actions has grown massively. Right now, um, we run about 75 million jobs. The slide says 73, but when I looked this morning, it's about 75 million different jobs a month across a wide variety of workloads. CI is probably the most common thing that people uh, absolutely automate. But the amazing growth has really come, I think, due to the community. And if we look across sort of all of the different CIs that happen on GitHub, we definitely uh, believe Actions is by far the, the number one. Uh, we, we, we seem to do the most, at least from what we can see. But the marketplace has been just an incredible uh, growth factor. There are more than 6,200 different Actions that are used, uh, that are available in the marketplace. And if we look at... Uh, the telemetry across all of GitHub Actions, we actually see closer to 10,000 different actions used uh, across different organizations. And we think that's pretty incredible because that means people are are both using the community, but also taking advantage of, of using actions within their own organizations. And so I just really want to thank the community for that incredible uh, vote of confidence, frankly. So in today's topic, Talk about continuous delivery with GitHub Actions. And, you know, this is always a, a fun topic because continuous delivery means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But uh, specifically with Actions, you know, the, the question actually I got from a couple of people uh, when I first started talking about what we were doing was, well, I can do a CD with Actions today. Actions can be triggered off of lots of different events, pull requests and push and new releases and things like that. And that is absolutely true. In fact, uh, I did a talk at Satellite back in the spring of, of a way you could do a continuous delivery workflow with GitHub Actions. But when I talk to different types of customers, and a lot of them tend to be sort of more enterprise focused or, or customers that have compliance needs, there definitely were some gaps that I thought we needed to fill. And so really what I want to talk about is, is yes, while you can do continuous delivery with Actions today, we thought that we could do a better job. And, and frankly, we think we can continue to do a better job even beyond what we are shipping now. So what I wanted to talk about uh, for this talk are really focusing on four, I call it four-ish new key capabilities in GitHub Actions that we think working together really help you take your continuous delivery workflows kind of to a next level. And, and then over time, some of these capabilities, we really have some great ideas uh, of ways we think we can build on them. But also, you know, as we have been doing all along, I think we can learn a lot from the community and how they can, how you guys, frankly, take these capabilities and do interesting things with them. So to start out, I'm going to talk about the capabilities, and then we're going to go into a, a set of demos to look at how they could be put into practice. So the first one I sort of term protect. And what we implemented was protected environments. And the idea here is we wanted to prevent unauthorized deployments. And in order to, to think about how that might work with, with GitHub Actions, in fact, you've seen this, this on the roadmap. If you looked at our public roadmap, we have something called manual approvals. And there were a couple of different ways that we thought about implementing that kind of feature. But in the end, we relied on this concept that we really introduced with pull requests, which was required reviewers for code to move, and thought about how we could take that same idea and move it into deployment and think about required reviewers for deployments. And so this is configured on your repo settings outside of the workflow. And when you try to deploy to a given environment, if a set of re reviewers is required, the system will pause that job before it ever goes to a runner. 
and send out a series of notifications and require a person in this list or, or somebody in a team to come and say it's okay for that job to continue to deploy to that environment. And the other thing we did with this is we wanted to make sure we had good separation of concerns. And so in order to be in this list, you actually only need read access to the environment, or, or sorry, read access to the repository. And that allows you to have people that approve deployments that don't necessarily have the ability to, uh, uh, to alter code, which some organizations want. Now, this is great, but without the ability to protect your secrets, uh, this actually isn't that helpful because, you know, for example, in the current uh, GitHub Actions, you have repository level secrets, and that's great. But anybody with right access to the repository can alter those secrets, and so, or use those secrets. And so we chose to uh, implement another scope for secrets. And as we did this, uh, we actually built it in a way that we think we did it in a way that we think um, we can expand to other things. Um, so, for example, um, we, uh, sorry, we had the, um, we had the repo scope secrets and now we have environment scope secrets. And with those things, um, we have the ability to potentially do, produce other scopes. And the way these environment scope secrets work is you can, um, the job that does the deployment doesn't get access to these secrets. Uh, until after the approval, so after the required reviewers go through. So that protects those secrets from unauthorized access. Next, uh, we heard from a lot of people that you know, they want to be able to track what is currently in a particular environment, whether that environment is production or if that environment is a staging or, or whatever. And you know, one of the questions asked actually in the previous session was about how you could track which you know, work items or which issues uh, had been moved into a particular environment. And, Starting to build this new activity log uh, here is is part of our goal to to really move in that direction, and this is kind of where our, this kind of four ish new capabilities comes in, because this deployments view actually exists in GitHub today. It just isn't very commonly used because it's a little bit hard to make it show up. And so we integrated, took some of the existing platform in GitHub and integrated directly into Actions to make it easy for you to get this list of deployments. And finally, uh, we wanted to give you a much better way to visually track how your workflows are progressing. You know, as you have these more complex workflows, particularly ones that do sort of pipeline style deployments to different environments, or maybe have rich matrices or other uh, concepts, having the ability to see where those go and, and sort of track their progress at this very visual level, we think improves just the overall usability of actions. Uh, the usability of more complex workflows and the ability to debug potential issues. So with that being said, uh, I want to go now to a demo and take a look at how these things can be put together in practice. All right. So here I've got a demo application that is a really, really basic application, really, really basic app. Um, and what it does is it just simply goes and lists out popular repos on GitHub by language. In fact, this application is the same one that I've used previously in CD demos, but I want to, and I really wanted to kind of show you how we've improved things. So what I'm going to do is, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and make a quick code change just to kind of kick off the process, and then we'll talk through how this works. So let's go to source here, and I'm going to simply add another language to our header there. We're going to go add, I don't know, let's do Rust. So go down and say adding Rust. And like a good uh, citizen, I'm going to actually use a pull request and commit to a different branch. So we're going to propose that file change, create that pull request. And then this is immediately going to sort of start off the overall experience. So first thing you see that happens is uh, my deploy site workflow has kicked off to build this particular application. And while that's going, let's go ahead and navigate over to it so we can take a look at uh, how things are moving. So first off, if I click here, the first thing you'll see is this great visual view. And I can immediately see that 
yep, build's going to happen. And then it's going to take one of these branches, just depending on how things are configured for this particular workflow. And we go look at how this is set up. Go to my deploy workflow here. I've got a job that sets up to build. And all it does is it builds my site and builds a container. And this is one of the places where the power of the community has really come in to help is I've taken advantage of some really incredible actions written by Docker, one of our partners here, uh, to build my container. And using this nice build and push action, I'm getting some caching to help my improve my container build speed. Um, and just a lot of work that I didn't have to go script myself. But the next thing you see is this deploy to review app here. And it's got a dependency on build. But right away, there's this new keyword called environment listed as part of this job. And this is really how you connect the continuous delivery, the new environments uh, scenarios to your job. And so I simply said, I'm gonna reference an environment, an environment named Review Lab. And then because this particular job actually deploys a new instance of my application for every single pull request, I'm taking advantage of another great feature from Actions, which is the ability to have Actions output a particular value. And in this case, this deploy web apps uh, action written by the Azure team uh, outputs the URL that was that was deployed to for this thing. And so I've just bound it here. And if I go back and look at my pull request, I can immediately see a couple of really interesting things happen. So first off, we see the build has completed. I'm gonna go show the environment and we can already see that this pull request is being deployed to the review lab environment by this particular workflow. And you know, we started to really you know, connect those things together. In fact, this workflow is completed. And right here in my pull request view, I can see view deployment. So let's go ahead and click on that. And I get a really quick access to this particular application instance I've deployed. I can see Rust is there. It's gonna load my popular repositories. And that looks really awesome. Fantastic. So everything looks good in this case, and I'm actually going to go ahead and merge this pull request. Merging this pull request is going to kick off, just like you would expect, some additional workflows. Um, in this case, that workflow is going to take a slightly different path. And so while this progresses, let's take a look at how I would go about configuring some of these new capabilities. Um, so in, in this case, uh, we're gonna go build our, our container again and we'll deploy to staging, deploy to production. But if I go over into my settings tab, I see a couple of new interesting things. So first off, I go to secrets. I can take a look and see that I've got these new contexts. So I've got, hey, we've got environment secrets, that's new. And I've got this Azure subscription secret here. And interestingly, I have a the exact same name secret right here. And what this does is it lets me continue to build on this idea that secrets are important uh, for the particular context I'm in. So if I went and looked at my workflow, the workflow I design always references this single secret called Azure Subscription Secret. It's just that when it's running in the context of, say, um, a particular environment, in this case, any environment other than production, so just the repo or review or staging, it gets one instance of the secret, this, this one, but when it runs in the context of the production environment, it gets this other instance. And so it lets me create workflows that um, work kind of regardless of which environment they're targeting, uh, which can really be helpful for maintenance. So if I click on manage environment here, we can go and take a look at a couple of different uh, things that are going on. So we see we've got this secret right here that's, uh, that's going on. And then I've got my protection rules. And so as a, a repository owner, so I happen to be a repository owner or, or admin in the case of org owned repositories, I'm able to go here and set these protection rules. Um, and so my required reviewers, I uh, made it myself, as I mentioned before, I can, um, I can add different, uh, different sets of people. So I could add a team if I wanted to. Um, and then, when the re required reviewers, when the reviewer is triggered, um, somebody from this set, so either a person from the team or, or if the individual person listened here, has to approve that. And for now, we just said it's just one person in the list. I think it'll be interesting to get some feedback from the community, from the people that use it on, if you want to have a minimum required reviewers or, or other kinds of things. We've also added this 
wait timer to force a certain amount of wait time before a deployment's allowed. And that could be useful if you want to maybe run some tests or run some validation on, say, a pre- on staging before production happens. Uh, and so you want to force a, force a certain amount of time to sit in a particular environment. So if we go back and take a look here, we can see how our workflow is progressing. We see another really cool new feature uh, come up in our visual graph here. And that was a, a progress bar that you saw briefly on this staging element. And the idea there is in the case of long deployments, you might have a bunch of different steps and be able to see how much time has passed and how much potential time remains right here from the graph can be really helpful. You also have this URL to the environment to quickly have access to go see where it is. And so I'm going to go click on that. We'll launch and I can see immediately what's in staging and say, oh, that looks great. Um, it, the feature seems to be there, and so I could go through and approve it. Now, I can see right here, if I happen to have been looking at this particular screen right now, that I need to approve it. But also, you know, we know that there's a lot of cases where you might not be right in front of it. So we've integrated with a couple of different things. So first, we've integrated with your standard web notifications uh, so that you can immediately see the fact that somebody has this new approval requested notification type for a particular run. And if I click on that, that's gonna take me right there so I can click on there. And we've also started to do some other work to integrate in other places. I think you saw in the keynote, Nat had a really neat little uh, vignette at the end where he launched dark mode and you saw sort of a sneak preview of some work we're doing with the mobile app. We've also done a lot of work with the team who works on the Slack integration to integrate those there. And you'll start to see these roll out Again, and we we think that as we use all of these endpoints uh, for GitHub, we can really help drive that culture of, of rapid deployment and unblocking your team uh, from where you are exactly how you need to. So if we go back and look at this, I click simply click on this button and I can click on the production environment. And if I had more than one review that had been requested, I would see that right here. I hit approve. And that's going to let this job continue. In a minute, it will kick off on this deployment to my production environment. Um, and if I come back after the fact and I want to know, hey, who deployed this, uh, who or who approved this deployment, you get a full audit log of exactly who made the, appro made the approval uh, and who made any comments. Again, you can see that progress bar. So we think that pull all those things together uh, really do add up to the ability to do very, very um, rich continuous delivery workflows with GitHub Actions. We have a lot of plans to enhance this capability in the future. You know, for, for example, the protection rules for environments, we really see that as a great potential point for integration. Um, and I'll be definitely looking for your comments in GitHub discussions and, of course, on the community forum. Uh, in the future on ways you guys take advantage of these capabilities and ideas for what you'd like to see them go to in the future. So let's go back and the big question, of course, is uh, when is this going to be available? So right now, this capability is all going to roll out to github.com in public beta on December 15th. So about a week from today, uh, you guys will be able to take advantage of it in all your public repos. Uh, there's no beta sign up. Uh, process. So you can just, if you're already using Actions, you'll just see it show up. Um, if you're a repo owner, repo admin, you can start creating environments and protection rules and environment secrets. Um, and those docs will roll out on exactly how you take advantage of the environment keyword in your workflows. So with that, I'd like to go back to the hosts and uh, answer some of your questions.